just in case. Okay. But yeah, we'll start and get through stuff. You have a quorum. So it turned it turned into summer again. <laughs> yes, it did. Jennifer, are you outside? We can't hear you, but it looks nice where you are. I didn't realize I was muted. Yeah, I'm outside. So they did open Lincoln at Fieldstone. And I'm, I may have to go inside because I just realized it's traffic time. So there's a lot of cars going by. No. Okay. We're going to get... Oh, are you recording? Okay. Oh, and Shalini's joining us. Okay. Let's make sure. Shalini, is it four in the morning? No, one thirty. Oh. What are you doing up? CMC meeting. <laughs> CMC. We're going to get started because because we're on a tight schedule today. I yes. texted Pat, yes. so hopefully Pat will join us. Um, okay. Seeing a presence of a quorum, I am calling this regular meeting of the Community Resources Committee of the Town Council to order at 4.03 p.m. on October 5th, 2023. Uh, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by Chapters 22 and 107 of the Acts of 2022, and extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time. Um, while we do that, I will take a roll call. Oh, we're also video and audio recording this. Um, we're going to take a roll call of members to make sure people can hear and be heard. Before I do that, Athena, Pat says she's trying to join. Um, so if you can reach out to her, maybe. I'll do that. Thanks. Thank you. Um, while we get Pat on, we'll take a roll call of the rest of the committee and start going through some of the plan for today. So we'll start with Shalini. Present. Uh, Pat is, as you heard, trying to join. We will catch back, catch up with her. Mandy is present. Pam Rooney. Present. And Jennifer Todd. Present. There we go. Okay, so while we wait for Pat, we will go through some of the logistics of this meeting. So we are starting a half an hour early. We will end probably by 5.30 is the goal, I think. And I think some people would like to end even earlier if we can. With that in mind, we will not be doing, unless we end residential rental property really early today, we will not be doing anything with items 3B or 3C on this agenda. We won't be doing nuisance house at all. Um, but if there is a little bit of time and we end early, and I don't expect there to be, we will be talking up talking about town manager goals because GOL needs some recommendations by tomorrow. And so if the committee has time, we'll talk about whether the committee has any recommendations on town manager goals as it relates to the joint CRC AMAHT meeting we had about affordable housing and all. We've we've had brief conversations about it in the past, but um, I don't expect us to get there either. Uh, I expect it to be all rental registration. Um, I don't believe there are any minutes in the packets right now. So once I confirm that, I haven't seen any myself. Oh, I, I did put I did put one set. I was trying oh. hard to get the other, but I will okay. have more time this coming week to catch okay. up. Which set but, did you put in? Let me check. Yeah. I think it was the most recent. Yeah. The 21st. Oh, okay. I read. I'll I'll look it up. Um, um while Athena works. Oh, it's September seventh. Sorry, September seventh. Yes. Okay. Um. Well, then we will work on those. Um. Pat says she's clicking and nothing is happening. Okay, I'll give her a call. Okay. So. Uh, according to our the the state rules, we will pause until we can see if Pat can get in. Um, so, because that is basically what we need to do with a fully remote meeting when someone is having trouble connecting from one of the members. So, with Pat having trouble connecting, we will pause a little bit to see if if we can get her on. Um, 
And so we will just wait for that. And while Athena's our minute taker, so <laughs> it would be hard for Athena to do both at the same time too. <laughs> um, oh, there's Pat. That's, yeah. It's pretty capable. Pat. Okay, Pat, you're muted. I am stopping at five o'clock no matter what. Okay. Um, we're going to try it. What I was had explained, well, welcome. We can clearly hear you now. So that confirms that. Thank you to Athena for helping Pat get on and for no, Pat for you. being here. Um, we are going to move now right into residential rental property. We're going to see how far we can get in that before people need to start leaving. Um, Pam, you have a okay. question. I'm sorry. I was actually looking at general public comment thinking that came before the action item. So I didn't know if you wanted to take it in whatever order. Um, I would like to get through some of our residential rental property first so that they can have the public comment can have the benefit. We're not going to finish it today because of a couple things. So this will be back on our agenda in two weeks. Um, so I think hearing our conversations related to finance before we go to public comment, especially because of some of the fee structure stuff I put into the packet will be beneficial before we hear public comment. Um, so, so we'll do it that way. And as I said, we, we are not doing items B and three B and three C today. Um, but I, I want to, before we start on, on things, the plan is to go through the bylaw. We have in the packet, the comments from finance, and I took those comments and you will see in the packet regulations and bylaw that are, that have some changes to them. And a lot of comments added of saying, here's the section that addresses the one comment in finance and all of that. So that's what we're going to go through. We'll start with the um, bylaw, then we'll go to the regulations, and then we'll go to the fee structure. You'll see I put numbers in. <laughs> Those are just sort of a way to see what something would look like in one document um, based on some of the things that finance said. They are not necessarily any particular let's vote on them type thing, but I thought it would be helpful if we started looking at real numbers in a document. Um, so then we'll go to that. There is, I want to address for the committee, because there are probably questions given um, resulting or revolving around the email that the town manager sent to the council yesterday regarding a letter um, threatening to sue the council um, if our, if the residential rental property bylaw as drafted is passed. We are not going to discuss that letter today. That letter has been sent to the town attorney um, and with a question from myself and the council president about what and when can the council or our committee discuss our town attorney's opinion and thoughts on that letter. Um, and whether that can be done in an executive session or must be done in an open session. So until we receive some information back from the manager and KP law about when and how we can or should discuss that letter, I am, I am going to wait. <laughs> um, but I wanted to acknowledge that we received the letter um, and that it has been sent to the entire council. Um, I will put it because it's been sent to the council. I will put the letter in the packet later tomorrow or get have Athena put it so that the now that we've mentioned it on this meeting, people will be curious as to what it is. So I will make sure it goes in our packet um, for that reason. But I do not plan on discussing that letter today. It's not on our agenda. And I feel like we need to be waiting for guidance from our attorney before we discuss it in either open or executive session, and whether it's discussed at a committee meeting or at a full council meeting. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answers some questions um, that might have been had. With that, we're, we're gonna, any questions before we go on to the bylaw itself? Okay, oh, Pam. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I just wanna note that in fact, we did run everything past KP law uh, when, as we, when, and as we were developing uh, the bylaw and the regulations, so I, um, I appreciate the concerns of the of the real estate uh, community um, 
I'll just say that. I'll just leave it at that. But I'm 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 a little concerned because we in fact did run all of these by uh, legal review. Okay, thank you. So with that, I'm going to share the. Uh, I also want to welcome Rob here. Rob, Rob is we haven't talked to Rob, but Rob is here. Thank you for joining us again on residential rental property as as we start to discuss the finance committee's comments to us. So I'm going to share our bylaw. This one, as you will see, all I did here, I did not propose any changes from what the council has seen and that we voted. Um, I did make a comment, a couple comments about where the finance committee had finance committee, this section on subsidized housing finance committee, their second bullet in the section was about questions as to whether subsidized housing should be fully exempt from inspections instead of generally exempt or may be exempt. So right now the bylaw is written as a, um, they, the, the, the town can waive the inspection requirement, um, but does not have to waive the inspection requirement. Um, and so the question from finance was, should that inspection requirement be mandated to be waived if it is um, a property that is regularly inspected under the requirements of the Commonwealth or federal government? Um, so we can discuss that. I would like to hear personally from Rob about his thoughts on that. He was at the finance committee meetings where this was brought up too. So Rob, do you have any comments on this one? Yeah, I think, you know, originally I wasn't in favor of entirely exempting the, these properties, um, you know, mainly because we do actually, you know, have issues in properties that, are inspected and they're not all large complexes that are managed with on-site staff. And, uh, you know, I, I know, you know, the, the, the property managers that were speaking during that meeting, you know, have very well run properties. There's no question about that. Uh, larger properties and, you know, fall into that category where I would not expect to be conducting the inspections. Uh, but still thought it was worth having the bylaw leave that in there in case it's needed. Uh, no matter what, we would respond to complaints, whether it's in there as an inspection, mandatory inspection or not. Uh, we would respond to complaints and all of the regulations we enforce, you know, apply, even though they're inspected by the, you know, by these other agencies and their inspectors. Uh, and we just don't always agree. Um the other thing that's different between the inspections is that we're looking for, you know, things beyond the 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 how the sanitary conditions of the property. So when we're doing our inspections, we are looking at our general bylaws and our zoning bylaws, uh, which would not at all be done uh, by these other types of inspections. Thank you, Rob. Pam. Question for Rob. Um, who currently inspects the Amherst Housing Authority properties? I've forgotten that you, I know you've told us in the past. Well, we inspect the common areas of the buildings. Uh, so those, those are not done by those other agencies. Although, I mean, I think, you know, they probably are to some degree, but um, those are the, that's a specific inspection that we do in any large apartment uh, building is the you know common hallways, boiler rooms, meeting spaces, anything like that, but not the individual units. The units are inspected by uh, a housing inspector that's engaged by the housing authority, whether it's their own. Uh, and we have inspectors that come into town from you know the Chicopee and Holyoke Housing Authority, depending on where the voucher originates. Uh, so you, you, it's not a, it's not the same agency or the same inspector across town for these, for these properties. Thank you, Pat. Yeah, I'm trying to um, get a sense of whether tenants in the, in the buildings that we're talking about would feel afraid to um, report something. And because we, we've had experience with complaint driven where people are afraid to do that. 
the other thing is, would they know that they could do that? I mean, sort of, you know, that they can contact the town if there's some egregious thing going on. Rob, any thoughts? Yeah, I think that's, you know, part of why we feel this is necessary. Yeah. Uh, and when, we, when, we go, when we go back to our, <laughs> our goals we established, however many months ago, you know, we I think we all agreed that. And with the public comment that we had gotten along the way that we agreed that, you know, an inspection has a lot of value. I think we know that. Um, I do want to say, you know, if we, you know, if we were inspecting a building, we come up across uh, up to a unit and the the tenant doesn't want us in there we we move on you know we don't we don't force entry uh just because it's you know maybe the 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 one of the units we were planning on inspecting that's just not the way we would conduct the inspection we we'd continue to move on and find find a representative number of pro, uh units uh the best that we can i think when i uh had provided, uh, you know, one of the fee schedule uh, scenarios to the finance committee and worked on with Sean Mangano, um, you know, I was only accounting for about 30% of the units that make up those larger 25 plus complexes in any given year. So, you know, I was, I was working with a 3000 unit number over the five year period. So, you know, I think and because I, that's all I think we could have done with the program uh, at that time when I was looking at it. So, um, you know, we're not in any way going to be able to inspect more than that. And there will likely be less once we see that, you know, properties are well managed and in good conditions and no complaints. Thank you. I'm, you're confirming how much I want to keep this in place. Any other comments or questions on that? And can we get to um potentially a consensus on a response to finance committee's question or comment to us on this bullet on potentially changing it shalini you were partially yeah. raising your hand yes yes so i just wanted to clarify that uh in this i agree with everything that's being said uh, and i support this section i just wanted a clarification on whether the waiver uh requires the landlord to apply for a waiver or would this the waiver be provided by um initi the waiver would be initiated by the town staff just because would the landlords if they read in a hurry would they know like someone might read this and think that oh all our properties are going to be inspected and they may not know that they have to ask for a waiver Is that um, question clear? Yeah, no, that question is clear. And when I was reading the language, I was like, are we clear on the language? Um, I'm, I'm looking at the regulations now to see if that one inspection checklist failed. So the regulations don't talk about um, waivers or exemptions in it. So, so we can mark that as needing some clarification maybe. Um, yeah. this part needing clarification. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Am I correct in sensing that the committee, um, but Rob first. Uh, just thinking as, you know, a possible response is to rewrite the section as instead of it being that the principal code official may waive the inspection that, you know, may elect to conduct the inspection, you know, it, that way it's it's presented as more likely to not be done, uh, but could be done if necessary. Okay. And, and maybe even go further to, you know, a representative number of uh, units, you know, not to exceed 20% or, so, or some number just to give some kind of a little bit more there to the operators of those pro, uh, apartment projects. Yep. 
Okay, we'll we'll think about that for the next draft. Um, am I getting this? I think I'm getting the sense that the committee is is reluctant to outright exempt these units from inspection as finance asked us to look at, but to to just be more clear as to what sort of the expectation is, which is it's expected that many of them will not be inspected. Um, and to clarify the language, is that sort of the consensus? I'm seeing a lot of nodding heads. So I'm, I'm doing this so I can respond to the finance committee <laughs> memos. Right, okay. consensus, consensus to keep this to keep this paragraph um, with some of the considerations that Rob just brought up, giving some flexibility as needed instead of mandating. Yep. Okay. the The notes are not the greatest wording. I'll be better when I write something to finance. I think in the bylaw, I'm paging through here, I think that was the only bullet point that related to our bylaw. So with that, um, I'm going to stop. I'm, I'm, we're going to move on to the regulations. Um, Wait a minute. You, had, you had a couple on B. I thought it was B1A. I think that's the regulations. Did I miss one? Let me look up the bylaw. I thought we were on regulations, sorry. No, we're moving to regulations now. Thank you. We were on the bylaw. So I'm, yeah, the regulations had more of the, <clears throat> the, the comments and I think they start at B1 here, right. Um, so B1A1 is the section I identified as referencing the bullet point number five where the finance committee wanted to be explicit that it is to be phased in over five years. Um, I believe we have been, um, but feel free to contradict me. It says we will undergo an inspection within five years of the effective date. That sounds like a five year rollout. Rob, is this clear enough for you for a five five year phase in? Yeah, yes, that was clear to me. Okay. So, Andy, yep. that so, so that said in B the five-year inspection requirement, um, if we use the words within a five-year period, each residential property shall be inspected. Does that make more sense? So something like this? Yeah. Jennifer? Yeah, um, that this does make more sense. So I just wanted to ask if, well, maybe that's getting more into what a finance committee question recommendation. If it were decided that within five years, every uh, property would be inspected, but after that, we might make, if we were going to make some properties less frequently, you know, extend the period beyond five years, would we have to amend the bylaw or can we put that, Mm -hmm. so, so I believe the bylaw does not let me let me pull up the bylaw again. I believe the bylaw um, in accordance with the applicable laws and regulations adopted under this bylaw, residential rental property property shall have passed an inspection um, in accordance with the applicable frequency schedule in the regulations adopted under the bylaw. So the bylaw does not set forth five years, the regulations do. And so if after five years, um, Rob believes that it should be seven, or even after two years, if Rob's like, you know, we're gonna need seven or something, 
what would need changed is the regulations. And once the council has adopted the regulations under the bylaw, the board of license commissioners would be the one to make those changes and adopt them. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so finances memo for item B1B was that um, allow properties that have a clean inspection to not be subject to another inspection in five, seven, or 10 years. Um, we had five. Um, is there any thoughts to changing that to a different number at this time? Pam has her hand up. Pam. Sorry, I'm doing it visually here. That's okay. Um, I need to ask Rob because we because we talk about um, you know essentially dividing up the entire block of properties to be inspected into five year you know cycle. Um, was that was from your perspective and from a staffing perspective, is that just not attainable? And therefore, to save money, we go to a, a less frequent inspection? Rob? Yes, I think if we are not able to um, add the staff that's needed, the, this, the staff recommendation was for this program with five-year inspection. Uh, so if if that's not going to work out, then we need to change this inspection schedule or maybe eliminate the inspection requirement entirely. Yeah. I, I don't, we're, we're getting to the recommendation about adding a half of the inspector, I guess, you know, which was part of the finance committee's recommendation. And, you know, that that would not allow any inspections to occur. Right. So it doesn't make sense. Uh, but, you know, I mean, we could do a lot of different things with this. I mean, we can we can kind of build on the recommendation that, you know, any any property that received through its initial inspection, you know, had any violation goes into a five year cycle and anything else that didn't have a violation goes into a 10 year cycle. It's just not predictable when we're trying to figure out how much staff you need, because I have no idea how many are going to fall into each category. Um, just, you know, splitting them up equally over five years, it was a lot easier to, to come up with a recommendation on staffing. Um, so, Rob, at this point, is your recommendation to stick with five years or would you, given your thoughts on where finance was and the questions they were asking, would you be recommending that we modify this to seven or would you recommend that the phase in be seven or eight years you know because would that would that help even things out if the phase in was a little longer than not like is is there a recommendation you have to <laughs> either keep both five-year requirements or to change something where are you where do you stand i guess is what i'd like to know i, I think five years is a long enough time uh you know i if we have properties that have the problems that we experience with the small number of complaints, five years is way too long, you yeah. know, for, for a reoccurring inspection. So we will be using the authority of the bylaw to, um, to create a, a shorter term schedule, uh, you know, re, re inspection schedule for those properties that have problems. So I, I think five is, five is good, you know, and I think it's reasonable. It was reasonable because, you know, we can't add six inspectors, you know, like some of these other towns have that run these programs. We can all, we're going to do this with two and a half inspectors or whatever it might be. Uh, so I, I think five years is about as far as I would be comfortable with saying we have an inspection program. Thank you, Pam. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, Rob. Thank you for saying that. I would be very uncomfortable extending the period beyond that. I think the the opportunity to allow some flexibility given, I'll say good behavior is important. And there's the discussion, but not in not in lengthening the initial cycle, because you know, we just we I, I want to get a handle on it. 
now. And five years is still a really long time. Jennifer. Just, I agree. I think five years, I think beyond five years, uh, yeah, it's like we don't have an inspection program. So. so it sounds like there's a consensus here. To keep five years for the clean inspections, basically. Um, you know, the annual is violation of local regulations then you can do a different frequency. So the clean inspections would be five years. The next item, since it seems like we've got a consensus is item, uh, what am I on? B13, part of the frequency schedule, which was the 25 unit items and all. Um, I opted to change it here instead of the number of units inspected is sort of in the same spot, um, but it seemed easier to change it up in C3 instead of 2B. Um, finance memo, bullet three, wanted to allow inspections for larger buildings to be done on a random sample. Um, and a random sample in total over the five years, not a random sample every year to ensure that, so the comments from finance were basically don't um, in don't have, if you've got a hundred unit apartment building in the course of five years, inspect a random sample of those units over five years, not to aim to inspect every single one of those hundred units over within five years. So it would be whether that be five units a year, every year to total 25 units or 25 units once every five years. But but we had written the bylaw, the regulations here such that it would be a hundred units every five years for a hundred unit building and finance recommended not that. And it was my understanding from being at those meetings that Rob also recommended that. So this is the proposed language I have drafted for that change. It's obviously a draft because the committee has not looked at it. It went back to prior drafts that we had of, of this to find some language. So I want to make sure that I did not that I did not misunderstand Rob and that this was sort of his goal was, for example, in a hundred unit building, if there are clean inspections in five years, you'd want to inspect a percentage of them, not all hundred units. Did I understand that correctly, Rob? Yes, I, I actually think I had misunderstood the bylaw and had been thinking along at some point that that's what we were doing until during those meetings with the finance committee and reading the bylaw. It, I realized that no, we still had them all in there, but I, I, I am comfortable with this. I think, you know, this is, uh, um, you know, taking their recommendation for this change is, is good. Okay, can can Rob, can you then in your own words explain what this wording means? The, this wording means that we will visit the property that has the, the 100 units. We will visit the property likely once every five years. So that'll, when it comes up for its five-year cycle, we would visit that property and pick some random number of units to inspect. And, you know, that gives us the flexibility both, you know, who would like us or not like us in their units uh, to be respectful of that uh, and and be able to move through the property or buildings on the property to get that representative inspection uh, result from, from how the property is managed. So 100 unit property, if we were looking to uh, target at least 20% inspection of those units every five years, we would go there to do those 20 inspections of those 20 units on the year that that property is up for its inspection. If for whatever reason, you know, if, if it was um, useful to the property owner or the manager to break that up year to year and do even fewer, but to get to that 20% over the five year period, we could be open to that as well. My sense is that because of the demand of the inspections and the time involved, we wouldn't 
prefer to do that for ourselves for efficiency, we'd want to visit the property every five years. Any follow up, Pam? Uh, yeah, that, that's that sort of an 80% reduction of our inspection. <laughs> Which, which I, I'm not sure was the intent. Um, so I, I want to make sure then if we're reducing by 80% the actual number of units that gets inspected, um, are we are we making sure that with the other um, conditions in the, in the regulations or bylaw that if there are if there are issue issues found or or other violations um, encountered or complaints called in that in fact the the town has the ability to to increase this frequency. So yes, the town does. Um, I I'll go to Jennifer and then I'll answer in case Jennifer has a similar question. Yeah, it was similar. If you're finding issues. The building commissioner has the authority to inspect more units. Yes. So under 2B down here, if mm -hmm. the inspected dwelling units do not pass inspection, the code enforcement official right. shall have the discretion to inspect additional dwelling units in that property. Yeah. So if okay. they don't pass sure. in these building, in the large ones, the above 25, then Rob's department could go in and say, we're going to do more or we're going to change the frequency, right? If some of them don't pass the annual inspection of found in violation, a, a higher frequency can come into play too. Um, the question I have is more for the committee than Rob, but I guess the percentage is, is a point of finance had talked about maybe 20%. So I put 20% in, but we have a minimum of if you've got 25 dwelling units or less, all of them are getting inspected. And so 20% until you get to 125 is less than 25. And it seems weird to say, oh, but if you've got 50 units, you don't need even 25 inspected. Um, so the question I have is, do we want a higher percentage, say 25%, do we want 20%, but I did put in this, but not less than 25. So everything up to 125 is 25 minimum, no even though that's a higher percentage and only when you get above that sort of 125 unit count, do you kick in that 20%? Um, or do we want to consider for rental properties, we put sort of the threshold of 100% inspection at 25, do we want to consider a smaller number there? Um, and I guess that's more a question for Rob for some of the specifics, but also for the committee. Pam? I'm thinking of small, small complexes that are, you know, two or three chunks of townhouse, for instance, and they're definitely under 25. They are definitely more than five. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that, I'm, I'm as interested in having those smaller complexes um, inspected on, on, a, on a decent schedule, but I would be willing to um, perhaps allow a percentage of, of those units to be inspected rather than the full 25, for instance. Shalini. Yeah, uh, similarly, I would probably say like 25% of total number of units, but because the intention here is to do a sampling. So if you do a few homes, we will get a sense of the rest. So I think we should not penalize the smaller ones and have all of them inspected and just have a sampling done. But then I was thinking if it's 20% of 25 units, what is that? You know, two, 25. Five, one, two, four or five. five. Yeah. About yeah. Five. 20. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Pat. So, yeah. Oh, sorry, Felony. Yeah. Go ahead, Felony. No. I just. Okay. I just want, uh, wanted to ask Rob 
uh, or ask the group is, are we ensuring that we can pick the sampling, not necessarily go to the sampling that the management company wants us to look at? Yes. At least the way this is written and this number would change down, the code enforcement official shall have the discretion to select and inspect a sample. Oh, I missed that. I'm sorry. It's us. Yeah, <laughs> so it's us. Sorry. Um, so I wonder, I'd like to hear, Robs, when I look at the, the distribution of our size of number of rental units on a parcel, up to nine, you know, you sort of get, though, then there's a big chunk of nine, of, of 10 to 19, and then starting at 20, it's sort of, we, we split 20 to 29, 30 to 39 in the charts that you give us, Rob. So in some sense, a split either up to nine, they're all inspected, and then 10 or more, you have to inspect at least 10 with a minimum of X percentage maybe, or you split it at 20, not 25. It seems, at least for our record keeping, where some of the bigger cutoffs are for what we have in town. But Rob, what are your thoughts? I I actually thought it worked pretty well the way we had it. Um, you know, the larger complexes that, you know, would be seeing this 20% or whatever number it is, there's, so, there's 11 properties that are 100 plus units. Uh, so I thought there was some, I, I thought it was, it made sense that, you know, the properties of that size are staffed with on-site management service uh, uh, maintenance staff. And when you're down in the smaller properties, 25, 50 units even, uh, they're not likely to have that presence or they might be, you know, covering multiple properties even in, in multiple towns. So I thought that was a good number and, and seemed to work, but certainly we can, we can adjust, we can adjust it and it still work fine. Are we, do we sort of have a consensus to go with this language as, as amended here in response to finance and, and Rob's considerations to keep it amended like this, or do we want to play, change it anymore? Oh, yeah, so I agree with the 20% now, but what was the reason for putting, but not less than 25 dwelling units? So, because if you have 25 or less dwelling units, all units get inspected. But if you have 30 units and you don't put 25, you go from 20, if you had 25 units, you'd have 25 units inspected. But if you have 30 units without this, but not less than you'd only get six inspected. And that didn't, I don't know whether we're okay with that, right? That sort of having that cliff of once you hit 26 units, you actually decrease dramatically how many units are getting inspected. That was the purpose of having the not, but not less than 25 dwelling units to sort of ensure that this, this residential rental mm -hmm. properties with less than 25 um that that you're still inspecting the same num minimum number across okay. the board mm. pam i think i'm okay with i think i'm okay with the 25 dwelling unit number in both 3 and 2a For the reasons that Rob just mentioned. Well, that's just Pam speaking. I don't know how everybody. No, I, I, <laughs> revise as revised. Gotta love the language. But uh, no, I, it sounds like I, I think we're we're at that consensus here where where if if we're not, please let me know. Then we'll continue the discussion. I think Pat's not letting us know. I think that's a different conversation. You weren't loud. <laughs> no, you, we can't you hear you. Muted. We can't hear you. I'm making sure you weren't trying to address us. No, I was trying to get Carol to walk the dog because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if that's the case, we will move on. 
And that was it for the regulations and the bullet points. So we will move on to So the fee schedule at this point looks a mess. Um, I wanted to present this. We will go back to the Excel document because a lot of this comes from the Excel document, at least in section A and B. Um, but finance memo for section the section A with initial permit fees, the finance memo requested having a lower renewal fee than an initial registration fee. I had... I think mistakenly indicated we had considered that. I think I was re referring to the inspection fees where Rob had said a renewal inspection should be less than an initial inspection because some of the paperwork and, and investigation is already done. But I, I it, it might be the same with a permit fee the first time you apply. It, is that paperwork related to the inspection, Rob, or just issuing of the permit the first time or both such that we could we could indicate and justify different staffing time costs for inspections um, and and initial differential fees for the first time you apply for a permit being more expensive than the next time you apply for a renewal because finance had requested we consider it. I, I think it could be both um, if if the property isn't say in an inspection schedule till year four or five from when it makes its initial application, there's still a level of review that should be done uh, to confirm that the number of units being requested at least aligns with, you know, if we have a special permit or look at our assessor's records of the property. So there, there's a little bit more work. Uh, it's sort of the way we do it, would do it now. Uh, without an inspection program, there's a little bit more work and time on that initial permit to do the review of uh, town records. And then I think for inspection, we'd like it to take, you know, be a little bit more involved on the first inspection so that we can gather that baseline information about the property and have that updated and, and accurate uh, going forward. Okay. So the question for this document is, are we in accordance in consensus with having separate initial permit fees and renewal permit fees as requested by finance? Ignore the numbers for now. Just the, the set of having two different fees. Yeah, I look, sorry. To this go, ahead, Shalini, go ahead, Shalini. Shalini, then Pam. Yeah, I looked at two other cities, just two others, and they did have that where the renewal is generally lower. So it makes sense to do that. Right, Pam? Yeah, I would I would say the same, except um um yeah. It, it, the, the only the only catch is that that nearly all of our properties or whatever percentage the, the department has has unearthed and, and brought to light. Um, you know, have already been permitting for a number of years. So uh, it's it's really we're just talking about the two or three a year, perhaps, that come in as new as new rentals that make a difference. So in in a way, it really doesn't matter. It's not going to be a significant gain, you know, of, of cash flow. So I, for that reason, I'm I'm also very comfortable just having a modest standard fee that is applied all the time. Thoughts? Well, I would agree. Okay. Unless we find a lot of properties that haven't been taking out a permit, but then they take it out for the first time at the higher fee. Yeah. Yeah, so in this case, in this case, actually, so to, that's that's a really good point. If you know the the twelve hundred or fifteen hundred or whatever have been doing it, they're not going to be affected by that by that initial fee issue. So it really is just the new the new ones coming in and those who have neglected to get a permit. Um, and I wouldn't mind that fee being higher. 
So I'm I'm now I'm now changed my mind. <laughs> so I'll make the note that we're fine with adding it in, but we don't think it'll make much of a difference to the fee schedule at initially. Or the bot or what's received. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the next question, at least related to the fee structure, right? This is this is the structure of fees. You'll notice that this second number two is deleted in both sections because I basically just copied the section and then made them parallel. Um, the finance committee was concerned about the legality of um, separating out not owner occupancy um, from others, but sort of this, we had talked about it as like owner adjacent or local ownership from others. Um, and so their recommendation, I, I don't think this showed up in their memo, but it's it was there when I attended the meetings, they would, would be concerned with keeping that in and would recommend deleting that portion of our permit fee structure. Could you make it larger, please, Mandy Jo? The document. Thank Better? You. Yes. <laughs> All right. So thoughts on that. We could either delete it. We could ask town council for their thoughts on the legality of it. Um, we, at this point, are unsure how many properties would fall under this category. I think a lot. Yeah. Does Rob have a just off the cuff estimate as to how many properties might fall under that sort I, of? Yeah, category? I do, but it's not, we can't rely on the number. I'll tell you why. Uh, it was 416. Um, but when you generate that kind of report, you get, you get things like, um, you know, middle initials are missing from one name to another, or, you know, there, there's just, the the LLCs the the trusts you get these different configurations so it's not entirely accurate so it's less than four sixteen that would be the worst case scenario or the largest number um, but I'm not I'm not sure how many you know it would actually end up to be because we know a lot of property owners are are or a lot of properties are owned uh, in common but under different names and structures. Pam. Would would that would that difficulty be sort of the root of the problem? I I would otherwise totally support this as like a local, it's like a local benefit, a local preference. Um, but if but if in fact, you know, we charge we, we give this discount to, you know, one one person because their initials lined up properly and then the, their other property or their fourth or fifth properties were somehow listed differently um, and they shouldn't have gotten the discount. I think that's where people would start complaining. Is that going to be a problem? It's going to be tr complicated for sure. Um, and, you know, almost we have to, we would almost have to just rely on whatever they say to us. You know, if they check the box during registration that I only own three properties, to generate that fee to be lower. I'm not sure how we would be able to check that yeah. uh, in any reasonable way because, you know, and then, you know, we'd have to define something here because does the owner, if you have three different LLCs, you know, for your obvious reasons being in business, does that, those are three different owners. You know, that's the way we've always looked at that for other purposes. Uh, so we'd have to work through those issues as well. Mm. There goes the nice local discount then. So does that mean, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jennifer. So does that mean if you, I'm sorry, we're up to parcels. Um, if you own the prop, if you're renting out the two properties next door to you, would, would that, would you come under the up to six units? Or is that what we're saying? Would we, you could no longer... No, the six units is one parcel. 
one and parcel. So item number two that's tentatively deleted was the in the attempt to get to the instance, I think, Jennifer, that you were mentioning, you own three parcels in a row, you live in one and you rent the other two parcels out that are technically separate parcels. And what Rob is saying is sometimes those parcels are under different names. Are under LLCs and sometimes they're not. Well, what if we said they had to be under the, what if only if they're under the same name, is that something one could do? I mean, I'm thinking of someone whose door I knocked on yesterday. You might've also Mandy <laughs> and he owned, his daughter lived next door and then he knew that, you know, he owned the other side. Yeah, I, I think the concern with finance was it's discriminatory as to place of residence. And is it legal? So I guess I would I would want to ask KP Law whether such a distinction is legal to institute in a fee basis. I think we can work out the language for clarity purposes, for Rob's purposes, if it is, and we want to pursue it. But I guess my response to finance would be, let's go ask KP Law. But if if other people are are thinking about just deleting it because of the I, concern, I would like to. I'd like to. I support the KP law. This, let's have them look at it first. Does that sound good for everyone? I agree. Yeah. I mean, I can see it gets really muddy quickly if, depending on how the ownership is described, or if if they're. If they live in Amherst, but their LLC has a Greenfield post office box, you know, just all of that. Yeah. And I don't uh, want to give Rob that much more work. <laughs> <laughs> so that question was the same. And then I just gave ranges for fees. Finance was looking for more. So I looked up some prior documents that had them in. Um, the goal here is to send finance a document back that has a proposed fee schedule with fees in it. Um, the ones that do not show up in the Excel spreadsheet are these transfer of permit and administrative appeal fees. So I would like to discuss those before we move to the Excel spreadsheet. And, the, and as you can see, the rest of the fees I put in based on certain options in the spreadsheet. So, so we'll discuss the spreadsheet, but, um, I'm also, we're coming up on, we're at five yeah. o'clock and yeah. so I'd like to stop right after this. Okay. Um, let's see if we can get these two done and then, and then we'll go. I based the 110 on, as you see from the comment, what ZBA is charging for appeals from decisions of the building commissioner. Um, so it seemed like a logical place to base a appeal fee on. Um, thoughts from Rob or any committee members on that number? It's fine. It's fine with me. It seemed to make sense similar to the other appeals process we have. I mean, just so you know, the ZBA process also includes a legal advertisement fee that wouldn't be needed here, um, but they pay, you know, that's another $300 uh, for those fees. So the, the appeal application fee itself would be the same, and that seems fine to me. Transfer permit fee, I don't think it's necessary, but, you know, it doesn't hurt anything at either. Uh, it's just more work, you know, there's, there's few of those. We're lucky if the owner contacts us, we're usually looking at transfers to, you know, through the, uh, registry of deeds transfers to see that properties, uh, changed ownership. And if we can get them to update their information and, and as easy as possible for the rest of that current year, we're happy with that. So we have updated contact information, uh, never been worried about collecting a fee for that. Um, we usually do it by email. It's pretty, pretty simple. Okay. Shalini, then Jennifer? I just wanted to make sure we have enough time for gen uh, public comment. Okay. Oh, right. Oh, yes. So consensus on the 110, is there any consensus on whether to drop or charge a transfer permit fee? Jennifer? 
Yeah. If what I just heard from Rob, if it's more work for them, why <laughs> that should decide it? <laughs> yeah, I agree. I Everyone agree. good with deleting that fee? <laughs> okay, so we're going to stop this one for now. It, we will start next meeting um, with the spreadsheet and the options um, for that. You're talking, the, you're talking about the fee spreadsheet. The fee spreadsheet to try and get something back to finance by the end of October is when I told them I would try to get something back to them from this committee. So we will we will do that. We'll start okay. next meeting, I believe, with that um, and all. So with that, we will move to public comment at this. If, if it's okay with the rest of the committee, we'll we'll move on and end this discussion and all and, and work towards closing out our meeting. We will move to public comment. Um, where are we? General public, public comment on matters within the jurisdiction of CRC. Uh, residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes. Um, we do not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. So if you would like to make a comment at this time, please raise your hand. Okay, um, Renata Shepard, please unmute yourself and state your name and make your comment. Hi, Renata Shepard, I'm Justice Drive. Um, I'm glad some of the fees were changed, but really $200 inspection fees. How long is this inspection? Plumbers and electricians charge $100 an hour. Shouldn't take more than an hour for a small unit, like a two bedroom condo or a studio. Uh, that should reflect the time that the inspector is there. Um, I think more than $100 is outrageous. Complaint inspection for $150. Um, maybe there should be something added that. It should say that, you know, if a violation is not caused by the owner or tenant, then the, I mean, the, the owner or landlord, then the tenant should be billed for the, or, or the fee should be waived uh, to avoid, you know, the, uh, professional tenant trying to do something to the landlord and uh, the remaining is is more of a request than a comment i really requested that crc or people on the town council role play being a landlord of one or two units on one single family house in a condo or a studio and go through this process that you are proposing. The application, notifications, inspections, dealing with difficult tenants, et cetera, and do all the paperwork you are required, requiring from us, as well as balancing your income and expenses to see that you know the remaining is not that great. Considering all the fees and preparation you propose before finalizing your documents and voting on it. Um, I would be happy to assist with any related information for my proposed role play. Thank you. Thank you, Renata, for your comments. Um, there are no other hands raised, so we will close general public comment at this time. Uh, there is one set of minutes in the packet. That is the September 7th minutes. Thank you, Athena, for confirming that. I think before we do that, we'll say goodbye to Rob. We will be back in two weeks, right, on the 19th um, with a full meeting and a full length of time for our meeting. Um, and we will start with rental registration and then probably move directly on to nuisance um, and all with that. But thank you, Rob, for joining us again. Um, minutes, September 7th, 2023, are there any requested changes to them? Then I will make a motion to adopt the September 7th, 2023 meeting minutes as presented. Is there a second? Second, DeAngelis. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we will vote. Shalini? Yes. Pat? Aye. Mandy is an aye. Pam? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. They are adopted um, as presented. Um, and with that, I've pretty much gone over announcements and um, next agenda. Is there any items not anticipated by myself? I don't have any. Does anyone else? Pam? Uh, no, just but just to reiterate that the, um, the letter received is 
is already in legal hands for review. Is that correct? So Paul indicated in his email to us that he had sent it on to KP Law. Um, so I believe it has been sent on to KP Law. Um, and I'll, I will be in touch with him again to see what next steps of particularly our committee are as it relates to the whole council. Um, because I don't know how executive sessions, if we're allowed to, if committees are allowed to versus councils are allowed to, or anything related to that or discussion or anything. And I will keep the committee informed about um, all of that and, and when, if, when, and how conversation around that letter can or will occur in this committee versus at the council as a whole. Um, and it may end up on an agenda in two weeks. It may not. Um, and that might mean sending this back to finance or the council might take longer, depending on what we hear, because I presume this committee might not want to vote yet another recommendation until we've heard from KP law on stuff. Um, so we might be seeing more of this over the course of more meetings than I had hoped. Um, but I will keep us updated. That's a much longer answer than I expected. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Please enjoy this just in time. Try to be I'll clear. You all. Yeah. Soon, yeah. Pat. We are we'll soon. on a journey. <laughs> we'll see many people. And the fun end. continues. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, Dave joined us. We're ending the meeting. I got to go wash my hair. This is night. the greatest meeting I've ever been to. <laughs> it's, it's, awesome. it's over. I know. Right. Hi, everyone. Oh, Bye. Good luck. Thank you, Melanie, for Bye. coming and for everyone else for coming. And Dave, we'll see you later. Next meeting will be in two <laughs> weeks at the regular time. Timing yeah, is awesome. everything. Timing everything. is everything. Yes. Bye. Go, go, go. I'm so nervous for you all. Okay. Please go. <laughs> yeah. Get a good night.